On the 9th of February this year, I attended the Eagle Hawk Neck Fair. I go to this fair every year because it's such a good one, but this year it was particularly special. The fair this year was almost exactly four weeks to the day after really devastating fires hit the whole community. I'd really like to welcome some special guests. The fair was an opportunity to say thanks to several special people. Thank you, that was totally unexpected. Sally and Tony Crease set up an impromptu rest and refuge area at the Eagle Hawk Neck Hall. The police and fire service were acknowledged for their tremendous effort to protect life and property. And the local SES was given a special mention for their work at the Newbina Civic Centre, which became a refuge for thousands of stranded people. It started for us on the Thursday night at uh, Fawcett, where the fire started. And then we moved from there to a fire that was started with lightning at the Newbina, Storm Lee. So on the Friday, we didn't only did we have a fire coming at us from the north, we had a fire coming at us from the south. By midday Friday, the fire had hit the town of Dunalley. Temperatures of over 50 degrees and wild winds caused a firestorm. The fire jumped the canal. The police ordered the evacuation of communities on the Forestier Air Peninsula. Dunalley, Madonna, Boomer Bay and Eagle Hawk Neck. The evacuees were to head to the Civic Centre in Newbina. I got a phone call from, from John McGuinness, you've been a police officer, he was at Dunalley, and he said, we've got 500 cars heading your way, you better open the Civic Centre. <laughs> and that's how it started, basically. Yeah, if you'd like to register up at the big red brick... As the cars began to roll into town, it became very clear that this was going to be a massive undertaking. The majority of the people had arrived with only the clothes they were wearing. Some were on holiday, we were actually due to go to Tahoon um, doing the air walk and decided to go to Port Arthur today. <laughs> came on a rescue mission. Came on a rescue mission. Yeah, we came to rescue the mother and father in law. We've got stuck down here now. And some were from towns that had just been impacted by the fire. No, it was pretty bad. It's done it's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah. It's very. We've lived there a long time, but this is the worst I've ever seen it. So. Uh, I don't know, a few hours ago it was just coming over the hill and yeah, apparently it's taken all our homes and as far as we know, yeah. we're holding on to hope that it's not looking good. Yeah. So we, uh, we just did what we normally do, organised food, enough food the first night for I think it was nearly 2,300 people. Well, the Lions Club and Rotary did the catering pretty much on the for the first meal. Uh, then we got a generator onto the water system and got the toilets flushing and water at a tap. Um, obviously we've got no power apart from the emergency power and the generator running the toilet, so there won't be too much lighting in here tonight. Fresh water, um, ask the Lions Club to act. Everyone wanted to get home, but with fire still out of control and burning on two fronts, safety was the priority. This was going to take some time. And then next morning we had a big generator loaned to us from the local quail farm and that got the whole centre with electricity back on, which was a godsend. Re reiterating, you haven't been forgotten, we are still trying to get, uh, get you guys out of here. We've been through this morning ourselves up into um, a Dunna Summers Bay area um, and there's still trees coming down across the road, there's still power lines. Um, with poles burn out that are hanging across the road, so it's... It is the only road out remained closed, so it would be another day at the Civic Centre. Just, just be patient, have a cup of coffee, bottle of water, something like that. Wash your dickers out up the other end, whatever you want to do, and hang in there and we'll get to you as soon as we can, OK? We didn't have enough manpower on the ground as SES unit. To manage it on our own, it was really everyone had to get in and help each other, and that's what happened. How many meals have we made? Yeah, 
I went through 60 loaves of bread yesterday. Yeah, 60 loaves of bread. We've done wraps. We've, we can't think how many tons and tons of food. I've been washing up since half past nine this morning. I've had a couple of little breaks. Thank you. How many people have you, have you reckon you've served in here oh. in the I reckon a thousand. <laughs> Probably more than that. Probably more. Alright, there you go. I don't mind washing up. Thank you very much. It's been rough sleeping in the car, the four of us, but the people here are unreal. They are just so unreal. They've gone out of their way for everybody. Well, we're going today. You watch. He was here for the 1967 fires. Remember, we lost a lot of people in that fire. It was 80 something Tasmanians, I believe, died. I mean, there's been plenty of complaints about not being able to get out of here, but at the end of the day, they've kept us all alive. They've made all the right calls, and that's all that matters in the end. The capacity of people to work with and for each other has been inspiring. It makes me feel a little bit proud as one of those who helped set up the Civic Centre some years ago. We went from the Friday afternoon until, well, it was Wednesday or Thursday when we closed the Civic Centre, so it was like a huge operation. Um, we're hopeful that uh, in the next couple of hours we're going to organise our first uh, escorted convoy. There will be priority uh, people to go out um, and it will be more than likely in groups of uh, probably 50 cars. After three days and some tense times, the decision was made to move the first big convoy out through the fire affected areas. For those travelling in this convoy, it was their first chance to see the extent of the damage. The fire had covered a distance of over 50 kilometres. It had crossed two bodies of water, and burnt out 23,000 hectares of public and private land. Recovering from this fire is going to take a long time, but the community has shown its defiance and its resilience. Communities, without a doubt, and this has been documented all around Australia, all the bushfires and floods, the, it makes communities stronger. Uh, people that don't talk to us, each other sit down and have a good conversation to, about how it affected them, what did they do to recover, you know, what their kids did, what did they eat, what did they drink, how do they shop, or, you know, it brings everyone together without a doubt. I hope we don't see another fire like this for a long time, but it has brought out the best in the Tasmanian community. Federal and state Labor governments are working with these communities to help them rebuild. I'm proud to be part of that effort.